let a couple more people log on here. We have JP from the Slanted Lens joining us today. I'm super excited to have him on. Uh, he'll be joining us here in a second. Uh, but first things first, we got a couple people coming on. I'll wait just one second before um, other people come, or so other people can come on. Awesome. What's up, guys? Welcome, welcome. B, yeah, B, what's up? B U T. I hope you say full after that, Isaiah. Is that what you're gonna say? Full, beautiful, awesome. Well, hey guys, we have JP from the Slanted Lens on today. Super excited to have him on. He's gonna be joining us here in a second. But first thing I want to mention is, guess what? I have a discount code for you. Uh, last, last minute holiday shopping going on. What's up, Scott? How's it going, my man? Last minute holiday shopping's going on. Everyone's super stoked and uh, shopping from their computer mostly. I know that. So guys, if you get on Lytra's website, Lytra.com, I'm going to offer you 15% off right now, and it's only good for 48 hours. Uh, that is right, 48 hours, not 48 minutes, not 48 days, 48 hours. You have two days to use this code. So if you just uh, type in, in the discount code in the promo code area at checkout, if you type out Creative Corner in all caps, uh, no spaces, that'll give you 15% off your order from Lytra.com. Again, 48 hours to use that, and uh, hopefully you guys can get some cool stuff, and uh, hopefully it helps you out. And uh, again, once it's gone, it's gone. So use it now if you can. Uh, I'll re-mention that at the end of the uh, show as well. But guys, we have JP from the Slanted Lens joining us today, which is really cool. He's got more than two decades of experience. JP Morgan brings his, his, to his studio two special qualities, a keen appreciation of the bizarre and a knack for executing elaborate shots. As a result, the studio's signature style, imaginative and high-staged vignettes. He has won both national and international recognition as well as having a steady roster of major clients. We'll talk about his clients today too. Uh, he's got some really interesting stuff to talk about with those. The disarming freshness and outlandish perspective make the work interesting and visually arresting. Morgan's style is very effective at commanding attention in advertising, sales, and marketing. Again, we'll get into that. And the studio prides itself in its ability to realize an art director's most complex concepts without delays or overages. JP attracts a broad clientele, including entertainment, consumer products, fashion, and high-tech companies. His work has been, in, has been the subject of numerous articles in advertising, graphic arts, and photographic journals. I wish someone would say something that nice about me. That was a, that was a killer bio. Um, I didn't personally write that, by the way, um, as you can tell. But yeah, I mean, JP is awesome. I talked to him yesterday on the phone just to get things going. He has a lot of insight. You know, he's pushing like 450,000, almost half a million YouTube subscribers. And we'll get into that as well. And uh, I say we just bring JP on now. Also, did you guys like the soundtrack? I just got the rights to that song to use for the next short film we're doing in April. Huge. Hopefully, Light Your's helping us out with that as well. Let's get JP on. Can you guys tell I'm hyper too? I had like six cups of coffee. We were on set for like 12 hours this morning. And uh, let's get JP on and see what he has to say. What is up, JP? Hey, how you doing? You Good, man. How are you doing? Here. I'm doing yeah, they excellent. Got, they got that square crop going once you get yep. two people on. I got to adjust mine, too. There we go. There we How's are. it going, man? I'm doing excellent. How are you, Drew? I'm good, man. Hey, thanks for joining us today on Creative Corner. And uh, we'll let a couple more people pop on because I know people are going to see that you're going live now. And that is uh, the more the merrier, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome, man. So uh, how's things going your way? You're on the uh, West Coast, right? Yeah, West Coast. It's uh, it's too nice here on the West Coast. It's just embarrassing to even say. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty je I'm pretty jealous of that. Considering I've got like two space heaters at my feet right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have uh, relatives so, in Minneapolis, Sandy, and Idaho. So uh, yeah, I know how that goes. Yeah, man. Well, Salt Lake's it's it's we're finally getting some cold weather move in. Hopefully we get some snow because what's the cold without snow, right? If if we're gonna go in, let's go all in. So Absolutely. And as a snowboarder as a snowboarder, I, I actually appreciate that. So <laughs> but hey man, let's let's dive into this thing. Again, thank you so much for hopping on with us. And um I just I like what I like to start this thing off with just a random question. But uh what was the last show or movie that you streamed? Oh, that's weird. That's and there's a <laughs> Um, well, of course, I watched The Mandalorian. I'm, I'm totally into that, but uh, yes. on several different levels. On one level, it really bugs me, and on another level, I really like it, but uh, it's, sure. it's a great series. But a film I just watched, just, just watched, was Safety Last by Harold Lloyd, one of my favorite films. I love it. It's the famous uh, film where he's hanging on the clock on the side of the building, 
and yep. uh, all the physical effects and things that he did. And that kind of was a little bit of the root or uh, kind of style, definitely a nod to that kind of work that in my own work when I was doing still photography and video. And so I just yep. watched that again not too long ago. So that was fun. Yeah, there's something to say about like a movie that you rewatch and you keep rewatching it. I mean, something like that's inspiring that, you know, it, it evokes creativity. I mean, I'm all about that. I, I'd say watch it as many times as you can. Yeah. I actually just caught up uh, with The Mandalorian. I was an episode behind last night. So I'm all caught up now. And I'm very, very pleased with where we're at in the second season right now. I, um, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to spoil it for anyone else. Like, yeah. uh, you know, like Movie <laughs> Web did for me online. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, man. Uh, again, I'm super stoked that you're on. Um, I do want to dive in now that we, you know, did the random topic. I want to dive in, uh, kind of go back a little bit. And I just want to talk about those early years. I mean, I, I can get onto your YouTube now and look at what you're doing. And it's obviously uh, amazing. And, and you've got a big following. But what what how'd that all start? Like, tell us about those early years as a photographer and a filmmaker. Were you a photographer first? You know, did then it evolve into film? Or did you always do both? Let's 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 go back a little bit. Okay, well, I went to Art Center College of Design here in Pasadena. And uh, I started building sets and doing still photography. I was in the still photography department. So I would build sets and I would create kind of just these little mini sets for the assignments. And they just got bigger and bigger. I mean, at one point uh, at Art Center, I built a two-story house cutaway. So we had people upstairs and downstairs and uh, just huge things. That even at Art Center, they're going, this is too big. You know, what, what are you doing? You know, and they, I had a hard time getting stage space, you know, because it took so long time and they were always upset with me. But so that kind of that style. I love Norman Rockwell. I absolutely love Norman Rockwell. Um, Visit his museum, loved his paintings. But I also thought they're just too pedestrian, too calm. And I loved yeah. uh, Gary Larson's Far Side. And so I started to take Gary Larson, the Far Side weirdness and, and kind of shake it up in the same bag as Norman Rockwell. And these sets got pretty big, and that kind of became my style. When I left Art Center, I was trying to get a job assisting, and my wife is an art director, and she said, you just need to shoot. There's no reason for you to get a job assisting. And I, I finally went to a photographer, and, and he said, you know what, I want to hire you because I want to learn how to do this stuff. And I went home going, he wants to learn right. how to do this stuff from me? And I'm going, I should just shoot. And so we just started the studio and started working and, and uh, created, got a huge space, like almost 4,000 square feet, and uh, – you know, we just went to work. So it was, it was hard getting and clients so, in the beginning. There's no doubt about it, you know, but I had been shooting through art center and my wife being an art director didn't hurt me at all. That's for sure. So. Oh yeah. That helps a lot. And you guys seem to make like a really good team. I know that we were in contact with both of you, um, which is really cool. It's nice to have help like that. Absolutely. Especially in those early years. I mean, heck even later when you get extremely busy, it's nice to just have a hand. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so how long you had the studio now, and then how long did it take for you to evolve into uh, YouTube? I know you started on YouTube, like what, maybe 10 years ago? About 10 years ago, kind of the, the process was kind of a natural one because I would build such large sets to do for advertising clients like Lever Brothers and McDonald's. And then they'd say, well, we've got these huge sets. Why don't we shoot a commercial? Why don't we shoot some kind of, you know, back in those days, it was all film. And so I started shooting and directing a lot of commercials, a lot of, uh, a lot of that through the 80s and 90s into the 2000s. And uh, in that process, I just got more and more comfortable with video cameras, with, still, with film cameras and doing the you know, camera moves and all that kind of thing. And so I started doing almost half and half. I'm doing stills, I'm doing film, I'm shooting both, and that kind of thing. And then when the, the uh, 5D Mark II came out, I was like, oh, this is just too easy now. you know. Yep. And so at that point, you know, it just, I was shooting a ton of stuff and my, I had an art director who said, why don't you, why don't you shoot one of your shoots and just put it up and show people how you work. It'll help you get more work. I thought, well, that's cool. So we just did a BTS shot of one of the things we did. We put it up on YouTube on this new thing called YouTube. We put it up, you know, and it got all kinds of views. F stoppers picked it up. A bunch of people are going, Oh, this is incredible. And so we just started doing videos uh, you know, of just the things we were doing. It was never calculated as a, let's create content for YouTube. It was always, it. this is our journey. Right. This is what we're shooting. This is what we're working on. These are things we're learning kind of thing. Absolutely. And what a time to get into that 10 years ago, because now you pop open Instagram. As soon as I'll close this video down, I mean, all I, you, all you see is behind the scenes 
of, of you know, studio shots and these cool macros that people are doing. And I mean, from the major, major food, uh, you know, studio shoots to just someone messing around in their basement. And it's insane how far technology has moved and what you can create now in such a small space. Yeah, it really is. It's fascinating. It's fascinating how YouTube has grown, you know, uh, I yeah. mean, I, it's interesting to me. I, I did a, a video on suspending things with fishing line and someone commented, Peter McKenna already did this video. And I'm going, I was suspending hundreds of things with fishing line when Peter McKenna was nursing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me Peter McKenna <laughs> taught me how to do this. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and that's just... <laughs> the thing. That's the thing. There's so many levels of these people doing these things. And then you niche into someone that you really love. And Peter is so good at doing so he many is. things. And, but he's, he's absolutely amazing. And, but, but also there are people that have done that for years prior to that, that just never put it on YouTube um, in certain yeah. things. And, um, you know, kudos to you for starting there and, and how, you know, what a natural progression, because I can tell you now that um, being a freelance uh, filmmaker, you know, that's, that's not as easy of a progression for most people. So I think it was awesome timing. I think that you make amazing content, obviously, too. So it obviously has worked out really well. Um, let's talk about the slanted lens. That's your YouTube channel for people who don't know. Um, the slanted lens, I mean, you're pushing almost half a million uh, subscribers at this point. Um, you know, tell us about a little bit about that. How, where'd the name come from? I, I was curious about the name oh, and then yeah. um, tell us, tell us about kind of what, you know, your schedule looks like in making videos. Are you basing videos around shoots that you're doing for clients or are you, do you have a calendar of videos set out? Well, all good questions. You know, it's, it's interesting. This, the name came from the fact that I had done all these really large set production images. Every time I would shoot for a client, I would do something for myself. And so I would yeah. shoot, you know, I have all the, the materials there. And so the next day I'd bring a crew in, we'd shoot some weird thing for kind of my point of view, that Norman Rock, Rockwell meets the far side. And so I was getting all these weird images and I went to make a calendar out of them with this publishing company. said, so we love, we want to make a calendar. I said, great. It's unfortunate images. And the calendar <laughs> company said, no, no, that's, that's too negative. I'm going, well, no, <laughs> it's, it's what it is. It's unfortunate images. It's unfortunate things happening to people. I said, no, no, it's got to be something different than that. So I was sitting in an airport one day flying back uh, from Dallas and I'm going, I saw something, I was looking at lenses, I saw something about slanted, and I'm going, how about the slanted lens? Like, things are just a little off, a little, you know, not uh, yeah. not horizontal, not, they're just a little weird, a little strange. And so I pitched that to the publisher, and they said, oh, that's fabulous. So that was kind of, so after that, everything I did that was kind of in that publishing world became slanted lens. We did a book called The Slanted Lens, uh, which is out there still, you know, it's, uh, I think it's trending about 38 cents on Amazon now, so uh, it's a pretty big nice. buy. Yeah, it's, uh, really, <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, it's the slanted lens. And uh, but anyway, so that's where the name came from. And it really started out as just our journey. As we would shoot something, we'd yeah. create a lesson about it. Um, and in that process, you just start to see things developing. It's very much a behind the scenes, how we make things happen, how we light. I mean, always been. I have always been super into lighting and creating yeah. uh, that kind of effect on set. And that's always been really important to me. And so that's just yeah. where it, it grew from that in that, uh, that process. So it's gotten more and more now. We, we post every week, uh, every Thursday. Right. Uh, I just shot a commercial a day and a half ago, uh, two days ago, I guess, uh, uh, so World War II, 45 degree shutter, stuff exploding. You got all kinds of air cannons cool. and explosions and rolling in the dirt and stuff. And, and, I'm, and as I'm shooting it, I'm going, I've got someone shooting BTS. And I, I've, you know, I'm thinking, oh, so many things we can do to talk about here, you know. And so the journey just yeah. kind of, kind of un, it kind of unravels the slanted lens because when I've got to conquer a problem or solve an issue, it becomes an interesting topic to talk about on, on the channel. So. Absolutely. So I know why you would shoot, uh, a, you know, at one over 45 shutter. I know why you would do that, especially if oh. you are are doing that. So but maybe let's maybe explain that to someone who might not know. Um, you know, we, we call that the Saving Private Ryan look as a DP and a filmmaker, um, because that's maybe where we at least that's where I first saw it uh, being. Used. Well, let, yeah, let's 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 talk a little bit about that shutter angle, shutter speed. Absolutely. Well, if you do 180 degrees, which is equivalent on a DSLR of twice your uh, frames per second, so 50th of a second at 24 frames, 
things blur yeah. between each frame and there's just this kind of smoothness to it. That's what we love about cinema. It just has this really dreamy kind of look. If you look at individual frames of cinema, mo there's always something out of focus hands. There's something blurry, always yeah. blurry. But when you go to say a 95 degree shutter, you're now going rather than a 50th of a second to a hundredth of a second, basically. And now things are more sharp. And when you go to 45, yeah. you're going to 200th of a second. So now things are really sharp. And so what happens is, is things are so sharp is it, it's more, a little more jittery and you see things so clearly and it just gives you a, a, a realism sense that you don't get in that dreamy cinema world. And so in Saving Private Ryan, they did that in those battle scenes because it just feels gritty and it feels just so there. And that's kind of what that shutter uh, does. And it's an interesting look. I love the look. It's fun. It's very, it's a very cool look and it's cool that you use that. I mean, I've, I've had certain cases where I've wanted to use it and I've used it, but like the war scenes and explosions and things like that, that jarring look, it's just very uh, disconnecting, uh, mm -hmm. I think is the best way to put it. Like kind of head rattling a little bit, which is what the, you know, characters or the actors or actresses are going through. That's what they're uh, feeling. So I just wanted you to, yeah, it's what they're feeling. So I, I just wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit if someone didn't know, because it's such a cool technical thing that uh, I, I nerd about all about that, man. I'm yeah. all about that stuff. Um, <laughs> awesome. So so let's talk about, so it sounds like you're doing a lot of commercial work um, as well as using the BTS content uh, to feed into your YouTube pl platform. Um, was it easy for you to make YouTube? Kind, do, you know, I know you're a filmmaker and photographer, uh, but is, do you consider yourself like, uh, YouTube is part of your career a little bit? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, it's yeah. certainly become a, a significant portion of, of what we do. There's that sense of wanting to yeah. give back and to, to educate. And I think yeah. we're very much about that thought. Um, I think it's interesting because it is a part of my career because it is my career. It's just a reflection right. of kind of what we're doing and what we are kind of the journey we've been on. And so it's yeah. a pretty easy, you know, transition. Would I ever just do YouTube and not shoot anymore? Eh, probably not. You yeah. know, I, I just, I love to shoot. I have this, this, uh, this kind of love, hate. it's like having two, two loves in your life, you know? I shoot still <laughs> yeah. photography after, and I shoot stills and I just love it. And it's just so fun and you control everything and you gotta communicate in one frame. And after I've done that for a while, I'm going, I gotta shoot some video. I gotta shoot something, you know, so I can cut and, and motivate and, and, and move. And, and so I shoot video, I get back to video and I shoot, ah, oh, it feels so good. You know, it's so exciting. And after a while I go, you know, I gotta do something all one frame again. And so I really bounce right. back and forth with that. And, and then in that is that educational process. When I figure out something and it's, it's uh, kind of just, it's a revelation to me. I mean, I've used Kukaloris's and I, I, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of you here, but. <laughs> no, go for uh, it, man. I've used Kukaloris's forever. A, a cookie or a Kukaloris is just, you put in front of the uh, a light and you cut mm -hmm. holes in it, look like leaves, looks like a window, all those kinds of things. I've done that forever. I mean, just in this last week or so, I started to use wire and, things like that because if I throw a light against a wall if I just throw that in front of it it gives it a, an undulation and an interest that is so different than just the light against the wall and it has a much more fascinating look and it's a simple thing to do but it's extremely effective and I thought man I gotta do something on the channel about that I want to explain that you know explain that the way I saw it and the way it felt to me and, and that journey you know so yeah well I think there's so many levels of lighting there's so many levels of filmmaking and you're like I know for me, and I'm sure you as well, like you're always learning on set. So those ideas are constantly coming into your mind on set. You said, oh, we were shooting a commercial the other day and oh, we got to do something on that specifically. And then I saw one of your videos uh, the other day with you were comparing soft boxes, you know, and, and that's a big topic right now um, in Lytra as well. So we're just, there's just so many things that we can learn and uh, you're, you're constantly learning. I think that's what's so good about what we do is, is uh, there's never like, there's, you just never know everything and there's always room to educate, which I think is really important. And kudos to you for taking your work environment and bringing it over directly to YouTube and teaching because there's no better way to learn than just getting that professional source right at hand, seeing it being done and then uh, applying it to YouTube. I think it's great. Yeah. Well, I've had people ask me, you know, would you run out of topics? I'm going, no, the industry's changing all the time, learning all the time. There's always new stuff, you know, so there's just totally. a wealth of information and it's progressing. And, and so there's just always great things to talk about. So. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned, um, you know, putting things over lights. And I remember like looking at, uh, you know, like senior photos from the early eighties. Right. And I remember like, <laughs> 
they'd be on white and they would have that window four panel cut out, <laughs> like, you know, like blasting against the, the uh, psych wall and just little things. So like when you were saying that, it's like, well, that's been around for, you know, 40 forever. Years, so the third, yeah, forever. And, but how cool is it that you can take something new and then apply it to YouTube and teach someone that doesn't know about that? I think it's just great. Um, so I want to talk about um, like a working day because, you know, you told us what you did two days ago um what's a working day look like for you like maybe tomorrow um and then i know it's constantly changing it's a very loaded question but do you have a team helping you and and do you have editors cutting away right now i do have editors cutting away i don't edit anything um uh, i mean occasionally i'll do something if i have to but it's just the time I just don't have the time anymore so we have an editor who's cutting all the time and then uh, my uh my wife julene runs the channel right now um, pre COVID, we had two other people helping her on that. And probably that's going to build back up here. Uh, no, sorry. One sure. other person helping her, but that's, that'll build back up, but we're pretty small, but I have a core of Kenneth works with me. We do camera reviews together on the channel. Uh, Andy cow does a lot of the DP work for us on the channel and there's Jay Kaufman. I mean, there's a bunch of different people that we use on set and are kind of the, I've used some like Andy and I have worked together uh, for at least six, seven years now at least so yeah so a lot of freelance well, and sorry go ahead yeah no go for it keep talking so a lot of a lot of freelance uh but in that process i mean the the thing, interesting thing about what we do in the creative world and that's why this question to answer it is so hard is that every day is never the same it's it's a process of uh you've got to get ready for the next shoot you've got to invoice you've got to estimate you got to you know so there's this evolving door of prepping in, you know, invoicing, estimating, uh, you know, looking up and testing, you know, I had to go out and test all the 45 degree shutter make sure I felt comfortable on it. How's it going to look, you know, I mean, there's just this process and then shoot days are, you know, that day, you know, it's like Hitchcock used to say it was so boring when he finally shot because he had been working on it so long, you know, that it was just right. a matter of just get it done. You know, he knew exactly what he wanted to do. So it's just uh, that day. I mean, we, and we work long days, like the commercial we shot, we worked 14 hours. We did a, an eight to 10 and had timed it so that uh, we do all the outdoor kind of sunlight things. Uh, and then we want to do this kind of dusk into night for the, uh, the war scenes. And so uh, we planned our day around that thought and scheduled it out accordingly. But when I'm not shooting, I try to write stuff for the sign and lens um, I teach, I still, I'm teaching and that, that's part of my life as well right now. So I feel like I have three full-time jobs almost. So it's a, it's a crazy hey, life. It keeps you busy. It definitely keeps does. Young keeps you busy. Absolutely. That's cool, man. I love it. Well, that's, I support all of those things. And again, kudos to you for, for bringing that, um, professional style into the educational realm. I think that that's super important. Um, how do you like approach brands? I noticed that a lot of times like you're, you know, whether you're comparing soft boxes or lenses or things like that, do brands approach you at this point? Are you approaching brands? Um, is it a little bit of both? Um, do you buy them on your own and just say, Hey, I love this thing or I hate this thing. Let's, let's put it to the test. You know, pretty much all of the above there. I mean, brands approach yeah. us, you know, all the time saying we have this, we'd love to, you know, have you see. And uh, so we pursue a lot of those kinds of things. We have people that we, we reach out to. I'm going, I've used this for so long. I'd love to work with you, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, and we buy things. I mean, sometimes I just buy things because it's just the right thing to use. And I think, wow, this is something sure. worth talking about, you know? So it's a variety of all those yeah. things, but yeah, you know, we're definitely actively looking all the time and, it's it's a hard it's a hard mix because you don't ever want to create a relationship with someone that has a product that you can't endorse and feel comfortable about. And I feel pretty strongly about that. It's got to be good equipment and things that are going to benefit the people who are going to purchase it. So, and it, you know, totally, I totally agree. Hard, it's a hard thing because people are on different levels. You know, some things can be really expensive, but there's some things that are not quite as expensive. They're still very useful and good for people on a different level. So. Yeah, I think there's a product for everyone out there, price point wise and professional wise, you know, you've got to start with X and learn how to, you know, use that product or camera or light before you can move to the larger product, because it just won't help you, right? You have to learn how to use it correctly. And yeah, same thing. I mean, I totally agree with that. There's brands that can approach you and they say, hey, we really want you to help us out. But, you know, you're like, I don't really, I, not that you don't use it, but you know, you might, it might not be for you. Uh, it might not be something you fully support, but then there's also been brands that have reached out and you say, 
oh my gosh, I've spent thousands of dollars with you in the past. There's nothing more I'd love than to work with you. And those are the calls yeah. and the emails that you really get stoked on. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about um, the video projects and uh, let's just use that commercial as an example because uh, we're, we've been talking about it and you don't have to say brand names or anything like that, but how do you approach that video? How, how long are you in pre-production for or something big like that? You know, this one came on pretty fast. And so we were, it came up about three weeks ago when we estimated it. And um, then we, when we set the shoot date, we had two weeks to get ready before the week that we shot. And so it was, there's, it was for pretty this, quick. for as large as this was, it was a pretty quick time, pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. We thought we were going to get shut down because of COVID. Uh, Cause we started it on Tuesday after they had put the curfew in and kind of gone to that higher alert and locked things down in LA County. But LA County is all locked down except for production. And so right. production is still uh, still full up and at work here. So that's been really good. But so it's a it's a good process. I when I get a when I get an estimate or I get a script from a director, and this is from Ackerman uh, Creative, um, Ackermania, I I read the script, I go through it, I identify the key points that make me nervous. This makes me nervous. Yeah. You know, this is gonna be <laughs> this is a big one. You know, and after I've gone through all that process, then I'll go in and and uh, sit down with the the writer or the director and say, "How do you see this? What do you you know? What do you want to see here?" And I break it down. I'm producing and DP in the stuff that we do. So generally speaking, I'm not just coming in as a DP. A lot of times we produce the stuff that we and Jolene produces as well. So she and I kind of work as a team to do that. Then I DP. Cool. And so it's a it's a great process. But so once we've done that, I identify. Okay, so. Who do I need to get started? That's the first question in my mind. Who have I got to get started? Well, I got to get special effects started here. I've got to get, you know, I got to make sure I got a dog that can do this on set, which is one of the things, one of the shots, you know, and that's always, mm -hmm. dogs are always like, you know, people say dog, <laughs> dogs and kids. I'd much rather work with kids than dogs. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. The kids, the dogs are like, you need everything on command and they do everything, but nothing, but when you want it, when you want it. But anyway, right. so I get those key departments started. And then you just, I mean, it feels like, oh, this shouldn't be so hard, but there's something every day. You kind of have to keep the ball, mo you know, rolling. You got to keep poking it, you know, so you make sure everything's getting done. And, and then eventually that the day before I sit down with the director and I take him out to the locations and we try to see every shot, you know, and, and I, in the past, sometimes I didn't get a chance to do it on this one. I will shoot a still image of every frame and uh, we're, we, it'll be a motion shot, obviously, but, but here's our framing. This is where we're going to be. This is how low we're going to be. This is how high we're going to be. This is what we're going to see in the background. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of being at the location at the time of day you're going to shoot. I've been on sets before, yeah. and the DP will run through and look at the location. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm going, your, your light's going to be so different when you're here. I mean, what you're asking for and what you want is you're going to get killed here. When, the, you know, when we are here at 3 a.m., you know, you're going to have a whole different story here. You know, if you drag them back out there at 3 a.m., sure. you're going, oh, man, you know, we're in trouble. We need this. I need a, you know, I need a Moscow light on that right. hillside side over there, you know. And so it's just a – so I love being at the location at the time of day we're going to shoot. Stills as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to see what I'm after, no. what, what I'm up against and what I've got to, got to overcome. So. Yeah, I think that's really smart, just kind of getting that first initial frame, still frame, and then that way you can kind of base it off of that. And then I totally agree. So speaking of 3 a.m. Uh, call times or being there, it's already working, maybe a, a, a you know midnight call time. Let's talk about the importance of lighting because, cool, you want moonlight and it just happens to be cloudy and you got to represent moonlight. So let's just talk about the importance of lighting and something that you've found super beneficial. And what is like, what's a technique that you have, that you've learned recently that maybe you didn't know. I mean, and there's, there's just so many things that you learn as like we were talking about earlier, but something that you've learned recently that you keep applying that it just seems super beneficial to you as a DP. You know, I, I was just thinking about this this last week on the, not the project we shot this last Tuesday, but we did a couple of things last week and I'm going, Every time I'm in a situation where I'm outside and it's daylight and I'm trying to overcome the light, if I don't have a silk, if I don't have a way to really, really knock things down, then I just use the uh, shoot towards the sun rule. And everyone goes, what? Sure. what? Shoot towards the sun? What is that? I go, no, it's, it's just it's, it's the, the thing that makes it easy for me to work outside every time. I just get the sun behind my talent up high. I'm now shooting into the shadows and I can take a light, punch a little light in. 
and that's why that. I totally. love using the 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 uh, Lecture Studio because I can put that on. Yeah. I can just s slide that in a little bit and open up their face, uh, and that's just an easy way to work. And so I just it's just a kind of a rule of thumb, you know, get in the shade, mm -hmm. shoot towards the sun, or, sh or shoot towards the sun, or the sun, or get in the shade. That kind of is a foundation of, of just beginning light. And now you have more control. It's all about control. Um, Absolutely. It really is. I had an instructor at Art Center, Charlie Potts. He turned off all the lights in the room. And as he was standing in this completely dark stage, not nothing, you couldn't see your hand. He goes, I would like everyone to take out your cameras and take my picture now. <laughs> and there's this long pause. Has everyone got their picture? And he turns the light back on and he goes, when there is no light, there is no photography. <laughs> and he goes, Everyone's so just said, like, yeah, exactly. Full clap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so he goes, you think cameras are your tools? Cameras are not your tools. Light is your tool. Cameras, just right. an object that captures the light that you create in front of you. And so that was Absolutely. his whole premise. And I love that. I really love that. Yeah, well, Timor and I were discussing lighting um, a couple months ago on, on this uh, creative corner. And uh, I told him, I said, you know what I've learned? I was like, I always tell people, I'm like, there is no wrong or right way to light, but there is an ugly. <laughs> there is, there's a right way to light, I should say. <laughs> That's right. But there's no wrong. There's no wrong, but there is an ugly. And, um, and just learning those <laughs> techniques. And, and Graham even said that too about, you know, shooting towards the sun. And that's actually something I've, that I've applied on set the, the last three days that we've been shooting. I've been working on this uh, cooking show for ABC. And we do these intro walk-ups where the, the host walks into the restaurant every time. I find my son. I shoot right towards it. And then I've got two lighter studios right there on the uh, – on the mount and they're holding two and they're just walk Hollywooding the light with me and it's perfect. So I was really glad that you brought that up because that's, it's, it's really handy. It's a super it great really way is. to work. And, and that Hollywooding that and just walking with your talent, man, I use that all the time. Uh, yeah. Whether it's a, a dentist walking down the hall, just shot that not too long ago, you know, whether it's a host, you know, something for a show that's so nice, going to walk around, you know, to give you just a little bit on a video we did. Yep with the, the Lighter Studio on a hand cart. And I was sitting on the hand cart and then the guy would just push me around the, uh, the uh, back, you know, it was a uh, SKB, it was at their warehouse. So he just pushed me oh, around cool. the warehouse and I was doing the dialogue and things. But it gives you a nice light on your face and things are changing, which is always cool. You want light to be alive and changing and, and feel motivated and, so, and it makes it very interesting. So. Yeah, and the, and the fact that we have RGBWW and, you know, just having that control from, you know, all that, all that Kelvin control, you know, yeah. we were, we're shooting in a kitchen and it's 32 and then we're shooting outside, it's 30, you know, 56 and then we're shooting like this mix of weird light, it's around 46 and it's just, it's just so interesting what, what you can do with that light and it really has, I know for you and for me, it's, it's just made things a lot easier. Let's talk about using that specifically in the field and with accessories. Are you using uh, the modifier with that as well? Yes, absolutely. I'll put the, the, yeah. uh, the rubber modifier. I'm not sure what you even call that. The, the, uh, the small rubber one that goes right over it. I love that one. Uh, oh, just, just the, the silicone. The, sil the silicone. Yeah, silicone There's the There's a, yeah, yeah. I couldn't get that word to come out. Silicone. I love that. I'll use the boxes a lot of times. Um, but that silicone, I really like. I'll use a box or the grid if I just want to just just kiss a little bit of light. I stuck one in a um, um, laundromat inside the washer. And so I put it in there with a grid so it wouldn't light too much of the washer, but it just gave a little kiss to the person as they stuck their face in to look inside the washer. Yep. That was really nice to be able yeah. to control it that way. Just to, and it's all about control. Yeah. And that's what's nice about them. And they're small enough. I used them, not, I used the studio. Uh, it's been a while back now, but we dropped them in water. So that the glow of the water came up on the person's face as they came up to the the pool to look in and that was kind of a dreamy cool look and i love the fact that you can put them in water and not have to worry about them which is a really awesome way to use small yeah. and just put them anywhere you know you know and i think we've always had we've always had small but we've never had that much power behind exactly. something so something so small but i think that's where it really really makes a difference and again just the fact that you can drop it in water i i've you're like maybe the tenth person I've heard you know, as a DP say, yeah, we we put them in the pool because we couldn't do any of our other lights that way. We didn't want to electrocute the talent, you know. Yeah. I mean, and that makes t makes total sense. And are you finding uh, the effects modes uh, useful or beneficial in what you're doing? Yes, I mean, I use fire effects that TV flicker a lot, and when you get a fairly yeah. dim room, 
they're the perfect amount of light to just give you that little kind of flicker on the face as a person's looking at the television. I can't tell you how many times I've shot that shot. I, I probably have a portfolio of 50 to 100 images of just that one shot, you know? And yeah, yeah. exactly. And, <laughs> you see, and they're just looking at the light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like stills uh, in, in video. Well, stills is one thing. The video is always that flicker is going. And it's just, I've done that over and over and over again, you know, because it's so much part of our culture and our, you know, what people do. Yeah. But, uh, so that was great. I use yeah. fire a lot. And that's what's so super nice about the studio is that it's small enough. I can just throw it in the fireplace and I can throw some things on top of it. And sometimes I'll just, uh, I'll pump in a tiny tube off from a smoke machine and just so there's a little bit of smoke in there and that, that really makes it look alive and looks pretty good. So, so just those kinds of areas, just it's the smallness and the power, you know, and those effects are great. Yeah. Are you using the pro as well? I know that we, you said yesterday a little bit, you, you tend to as well. Yep. I have a one yeah. slot. It's a lens slot in my uh, still camera bag. And I, t- mm-hmm. I keep a studio and a pro in there and a light and a uh, uh, platypod. And so, yeah. so it's an easy thing to throw it on if I want to put it in a corner or something and it has its own stand. I can put it on a regular stand, but it just it makes it so I can put it in tight places and use it. And I, I love that. That's set up. I call it my little lighting compartment in my still bag. So it's perfect. You need that. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Like, and it's you kind of. I've been blowing uh, some people on sets' minds this week with those lights because that's all I'm using now, especially for like this run and gun style TV production that we're doing. Um, that's. I mean, people are like, "Whoa!" Like, "Whoa!" Where did you get this? You know, and things like that. Just because they've never seen the power. I even had, yeah. which is a big no no, and the grip should know this, but he he tur- he struck the the light and he was just looking at it. He's like, "Oh!" I just like I didn't think it was going to be that bright, <laughs> and I was like, "Well," he was like. Your first, you should know not to yeah. look at a light when you're striking, but you know, just little things like I had no idea it would be that bright, and, and it really is. It's it's game changing. It really is. It's a game changing yep. light. It really awesome. is. Awesome. Well, so I want to maybe uh, go into the future here. What's next for you? What are you What do you got going on? You know, I I see a lot of kind of a direction of the channel. I mean, I'm going down a little bit of a weird journey. I'll do one of the first ones soon here. Where I'm testing out some not common lenses and that's putting it mildly i'll leave it at that it's a little more bizarre than that and uh i want to play with some things like that um so i see that on the channel just a little more i'm going to go to some more more my uh, comfort area of just wanting to really explore some uh, personal projects there's some video things i want to do and some still stuff i want to do and i'm going to talk about that on the channel as we go um as for me i just i'm still shooting i've been you know, hoping to do more and more. I just got a call from Esquire magazine saying they wanted me to do this fashion shoot. And I go, I never really consider myself a fashion photographer, but, <laughs> but hey, it sounds fun. You know, I'm in, <laughs> you know. So, hey, yeah, fake. Not, you know, and I always say like, you don't fake it till you make it, but yeah. you know, you are what you want to become. So just, yeah, you are a fashion photographer now. I, That's right. I saw the, and I saw in our ad, you had a really cool shot of, uh, it was a yellow background and she was in a yellow dress and a yellow hat. Yeah. And there was some really cool uh, dots around her and it just looked really cool how, how that picture and that image came out. So I would go ahead and just call yourself a fashion photographer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. so, so last question for you, JP, then I'll let you go and you can get back to, uh, to the video world. But any advice for someone looking to uh, get into YouTube full time? I mean, I always ask um, industry filmmakers how they do that. And we've gotten a lot of the same answers, but maybe someone specifically for YouTube, because that seems to be where everyone's wanting to head right now. You know, I, I, the advice I would give people who really want to go after YouTube is, is one consistency, choose a topic, you know, something that you would like to explore that really matches you, your personality and your background in some way, and then be consistent in that, that topic and then be consistent when you post you know, if you choose every other Thursday, then just do it every other Thursday. Don't let yourself off the hook. You have to create a schedule and you have to stay to it. You know, you, we post every Thursday and we've done every Thursday yeah. for years. And there's just, there's no, it doesn't matter if it's Christmas. Or, it doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> we post on Thursdays, right. you know. And so in that yeah. way, I think it's been very, very helpful. But then I think you just, you've got to, Got to let yourself relax a little bit and enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. I think humor is great. I think it, it endears people and let your personality show whatever that personality yeah. is. 
you know, there's always uh, somebody's going to gravitate to your personality, whatever that is, and it's going to work for them. And so let that be your kind of flagship. No, I think that's super good advice. I mean, clearly, like the slanted lens, you've literally based your name after being a little bit skewed and a little bit, uh, you know, just not, I w I'm not going to say the word crooked, but just funny and just yourself. And, you know, like I'm the hyper kid. I'm like always like, ah, you know, and, and just, you know, I kind of letting that out and just being yourself, I think is super important. And I think there's, you know, you, you see it more and more with YouTubers is just kind of, you know, when they're, they flub, they like correct themselves on camera and they leave it in the edit because it's, it's funny and people can, you know, really relate to someone who's more natural uh, than just, you know, do, do, do. And I think that, and just being so precise. And I think that that's super important advice. Um, I do want to mention why I have you on here. Yes. Um, that we are do, we are doing a discount code for this specifically. Uh, it's on for uh, Lytra.com. If you guys want to hop on to, over to Lytra.com after we're done here and it's 15% off uh, any product on the website. And that is just with discount code, which you can apply at checkout. It's called creative corner, no spaces, all caps, just type creative corner and that'll be available for the next 48 hours. So we want to make sure that people get over there for that while we have you on. And then uh, we had a question come in um, from, I think it's McIver photography he says, PJ, where's the Christmas video? Yeah, <laughs> last year, <laughs> last year I put on a a reindeer outfit, and I was <laughs> had a, an elf in the background singing the uh, and like the seven you know twelve days of Christmas, but it was all the stuff we were giving away, and it was a little it was pretty crazy. It was a lot of fun. I totally <laughs> totally embarrassed myself. No shame left after that. So, um, <laughs> but this year I just jumped out of a box in a Santa suit, and that was it. So we got to do something more exciting next year, evidently. <laughs> That's that's right. Well, hey, man, JP, thank you so much for coming on the Creative Corner. Um, it was just really a treat to chat with you. And um, I love your YouTube channel. I'm going to keep watching there. And I mean, I, I, if anyone wants to get over to the Slanted Lens YouTube channel, he just posted a video today. It's Thursday. So yep. we, we have our and just that consistency, I think, is super important. That's great advice. And JP, anytime you need help or anything you need from Lightyear, let us know, man, and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on. It's been very exciting. I enjoy this kind of thing. I think you're doing a great work and uh, it's uh, thank a positive, you. positive message and a great place for people to learn. So thanks for all you do. That, that, thanks, man. Thank you so much. That's the goal. It's, it's an educational community. We're always learning. We don't know everything. And I think just spreading that education and wealth and just everything we can. And I just saw Graham hopped on. What's up, Graham? Graham's the man. Um, <laughs> but yes, th thank you so much, JP. We'll, we'll be in contact with you soon and keep creating awesome stuff. All right. Thanks so much. Keep those cameras rolling. Thank you so much. Keep on clicking. That's right. We will. That's right. We will. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. See you ya. Bye-bye. Guys, how good is JP? That guy's awesome. And go over to his YouTube channel now. He just posted another video. He's posting every Thursday. Consistency is key on YouTube. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we have another special guest coming on next year. This is a wrap. This is the last one of 2020. What am I going to do with myself? I guess we'll just have to push it into 2021. And uh, thank you guys so much for hanging around. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in 2021. Hope, every, hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. Hope everyone has a safe and happy new year. Stay safe out there. Keep the cameras rolling as JP's.